Hi there. Pick your math grade. This level is part of Adapted Mind Super Skills. That problem was hard, but I think we solved it. The brain grows when you challenge it. So, does, does mine look any bigger? I'm not sure. Does mine? Excuse us, Miss Einstein. Could you measure our brain growth? <laughs> I don't think that measuring tape will help us, Ralphie. Why not? The brain is made up of tiny cells called neurons, which grow without your head changing size. Oh, yeah, I, I knew that. Neurons? That sounds yummy. Neurons are much too important to eat. Everyone knows that. Well, what do they do? Um, um. Whenever you do anything, from math to cartwheels, your neurons communicate with each other to make it happen. By, uh, talking, right? Good guess, Ralphie. But actually, it's by sending an energy boost. Um, what's an energy boost? I was hoping you'd ask. All right, neurons. Are you ready to demonstrate how the brain grows? Yeah! yeah! When you learn something new, it sends a signal to your brain. Inside your brain, that signal gives a neuron an energy boost. When a neuron gets energized, it releases something called neurotransmitters, which pass the energy boost to a neighbor neuron, creating a connection. Each neuron passes the boost to its neighbor and creates another connection. But when you first learn something new, the connections between your neurons aren't very strong. Each time you practice what you've learned, the connections grow stronger. If you practice a lot, the connections grow really strong. And the more you practice challenging things, the more new connections you create. Why do challenges make new connections? For something to be a challenge, you have to struggle with it. Struggling isn't very fun. Unless you remember that the brain is like a muscle. When you struggle during exercise, it's a signal to your body to help grow the muscles you're using. When you struggle to learn something, it's a signal to your brain to send more energy and attention to your struggling neurons, which helps them create and strengthen new connections. So tackling challenges gives you the power to grow and change your brain. Whoa! May we eat our blueberries? I mean, neurotransmitters now? <laughs> sure. Sylvia, I'm sorry I pretended to know all about the brain. It's okay. I thought it was better to know everything already. I had no idea that tiny cells called neurons use energy boosts to grow my brain when I learn new and challenging things. Me either. How is this not considered a superpower? What about you? Do you like learning challenging things? So, how do you feel when you're trying to learn something hard? That's awesome! Tackling challenges is the very thing that helps our brains grow. And that's really cool, because it means that every time we try hard or struggle with something, our brains are growing. I love a good challenge! So, let's see if we can remember what a neuron is. I think a neuron is actually the name of the tiny bits, or cells, inside your brain. Whenever you do anything, from cooking to zip lining, the neurons in your brain make it happen. How do they do it? By sending energy boosts to each other and forming connections. And when you learn new things, what's happening to your brain? 
That's right! When you learn something new, a neuron releases tiny bits called neurotransmitters, which send energy boosts that create connections between your neurons, which means your brain is growing. But, um, why is it important to know what's happening inside our brains when we learn? It helps us learn better. That's right! Understanding how the brain works will help me find the courage to tackle challenges. Because now I know that tackling challenges helps my brain grow. Find the key to the castle in the clams. Find the key to the castle in the clams. to round 656 and 212 to the nearest hundred so we can estimate the result of addition. So we know that 656 rounds up to 700 and 212 rounds down to 200. Now all we have to do is add those two numbers together. So we know to start with addition all the way over to the right so 0 plus 0 is 0. Working our way to the left, we have 0 plus 0, which is also 0, and 7 plus 2, which is 9. So 656 plus 212 is approximately 900. We need to round all of these numbers to the nearest hundred so we can estimate the result of addition. So we know that 923 rounds down to 900, 776 rounds up to 800, 319 rounds down to 300, 222 rounds down to 200, and 28, because we're rounding to the nearest 100, also rounds down to 0. So, now all we have to do is add these numbers together. We start all the way over to the right, and we have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. The second column is also 0, so we know that those add to 0. And... 9 plus 8 plus 3 plus 2 is 22, so we bring down the 22. And 923 plus 776 plus 319 plus 222 plus 28 is approximately 2,200. Great!
Nice! So we need to arrange these numbers from greatest to least. Let's use a number line to help us figure out which number is the greatest, which number is the least, and which number should go in between. Let's start by putting 2,452 on the number line. By looking at the number line, we can see that 2,452 is about there. Let's do 3,667 now. Once again, if we look at our number line, we can see that 3,667 should be about there. Now we can do 4,625. We know that 4,625 is bigger than 4,500, but less than 5,000. So 4,625 should be about there. Now we can do 7,719. By looking at our number line, we can see that 7,719 should be about there. And we can finish by putting 4,689 on the number line. Now, should 4,689 be on the right side of 4,625 or on the left side of 4,625? To figure this out, we need to compare the two numbers. So. To figure out which number is bigger and which number is smaller, we need to look at the digits in the place values. We always start by comparing the numbers in the thousands place. However, since they're both fours, we have to move to the hundreds place. We compare those numbers and see that they're both sixes. So now we have to look at the numbers in the tens place. Now notice that eight is bigger than two. Since 8 is bigger than 2, we know that 4,689 is bigger than 4,625 and should go to the right of 4,625 on the number line. So now we can finish the problem by just looking at our number line. We see that 7,719 is our biggest number, so that should go in the first box. Now we just work our way towards the left, and we see that 4,689 is the second greatest number and should go in the second box. 
And if we keep looking to the left, we find that 4,625 is our next greatest number and should go in the third box. And if we keep looking at our number line, we can see that 3,667 is our fourth greatest number and 2,452 is our least number. Good job! Amazing! Monsterific! Way to go! I like it! Keep it up! You're awesome! Wonderful!
Correct. Great. Good job. Amazing. Monsterific. Super. Way to go. Let's explore the castle! This level is part of Adapted Mind Super Skills! Arjun always says he eat his homework. This is just as yummy. Um, Rolfie, how did you do on the test? I made so many mistakes. Oh, me too. I was trying to destroy the evidence. Um, great idea. Where's the pet? Hey, what's that? down because you've made some mistakes? Visit the School Mistake Factory if you've got what it takes. Miss Einstein. Everyone says it's a cool place. Let's check it out. Mistake Factory? <sighs> Sounds horrible! Flashlights? Check. Check. First aid kit? Check. Incredimonster action figure. What? Mistakes are scary. We might need backup. Welcome to the Mistake Factory. It can be tempting to run from your mistakes. Where's that voice coming from? I don't know, but running sounds like a great idea right now. But running from mistakes can easily turn a friend into a front. <gasps> if instead you embrace your mistakes as learning opportunities, they'll help you become incredible. Am I dreaming? I don't think so. But Miss Incredimonster, ma'am, how can mistakes be our friends? No offense. Yeah, isn't making mistakes kind of the opposite of being incredible? Well, not really. When scientists study the brain, they learn that the connections between your neurons grow, even when you make mistakes. So we want to make mistakes? What you want to do is challenge yourself. And if you're tackling a challenge, it's normal to make mistakes. But since making a mistake means that your brain is growing, then there's no reason to feel defeated, especially if you use your mistake to see what you did wrong so you can do better next time. Ah! But it's hard not to get upset by mistakes. They're not all this friendly. Yeah, sometimes kids laugh or your parents get mad. 
It's very sad when they do, because when you make a mistake and you think it's a scary bad thing, your brain doesn't grow very much. But if you make a mistake and think, my brain is like a muscle, and mistakes help it grow, your neurons send lots more energy boosts, which means your brain grows lots more than if you let yourself feel defeated. I guess we shouldn't feed these guys our tests, should we? Nah, but if we review them with Miss Einstein, maybe our neurons will get so energized that they'll make electricity spill out my nose. I don't think that's what spills out your nose. But let's try it! Whee! <laughs> Whee! Thanks so much, Incredible Monster! No problem. How about you? How do you handle your mistakes? So, what do you do when you make a mistake? I use my mistake to learn. That's awesome! Making a mistake is a great chance to learn because it allows us to see what we've done wrong so we can do better next time. From now on, I'm going to think of my mistakes as chances to learn. But what's actually happening in my brain when I make a mistake? My brain is growing. That's right! Scientists studying the brain have learned that when you make a mistake, the connections between your neurons get stronger, which helps your brain grow. Riding my bike without a helmet seems like a bad mistake that I would not want to make. When Incredimonster said that mistakes are our friends, did she mean all mistakes? No, you're right! Any mistake that can hurt you or other people, like biking without a helmet, is not cool. Incredimonster was talking about common mistakes we make in life, like messing up on a test or having a misunderstanding with a friend. If we accept and study those mistakes, we can learn so much! So, if I want my brain to grow, what's the best thing to tell myself when I make a mistake? That I can learn from it. Exactly! When you remember mistakes are great learning opportunities, it actually helps you learn better. Don't forget to study what you did wrong so you can do better next time. Find the key to the castle in the clams. 